Hey guys, this is Ryan from Theme Parks and Me, and welcome to another video in my collection series. Today's collection actually has nothing to do with theme parks whatsoever, but it is still very special to me. If someone were to ask me what is my favorite movie of all time, I have two of them, and by two I really mean five. The first would be King Kong, both the 1933 and 2005 version. And right up there with King Kong is Home Alone. And when I say Home Alone, I mean only the theatrical films, only 1, 2, and 3. Don't even get me started on 4 and 5, I'll get more into that later. Even though this is a collection video, I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about the subject because I am really passionate about it. For those of you who are just looking for the collection, you can skip right ahead, I'll put in the description when the collection starts. So I am really not exaggerating whatsoever when I say that Home Alone, the Home Alone series, has played such an important role in my life. When the first film came out in 1990, I was three years old. Although I didn't see it in theaters during that time, I did see it just a short while later. This is where the story gets interesting. So the first time I saw Home Alone was actually in December of 1990. The movie was still in theaters. I remember being at my grandparents' house at a Christmas party, and my grandfather actually had, I don't know how he obtained it, but he had a VHS copy of Home Alone, not an official, a bootleg. The front of the cassette had a label and it was just handwritten. It said Home Alone with a bunch of random numbers and stuff. And in the actual film itself, there was a little display at the bottom of the screen with the seconds and minutes running by. He had this on VHS somehow and he had it playing just in the background at the family party because he knew it was a big thing during that time. And me as a three year old, I was just mesmerized. I was glued to the TV. This was the best thing I had ever seen at three years old. Fast forward to 1992, two years later. I'm five years old, I'm in preschool, and me and my good friend Tim Lawton, um, our mothers came in one day and took the both of us out of preschool in the middle of the day to go see Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. Once again, I was obsessed even more so now. The Talkboy came out, that action contraption board game came out. I was literally in heaven. For the next five years, I was obsessed with these two movies. And of course, it didn't help that I literally thought that I was Kevin McAllister. I would constantly be drawing up maps of my house, my cousin's house, and filling in traps where I think they would work the best. I was 10 years old when the third movie came out. Just a warning, the next thing I'm about to say is solely my opinion. It's not a fact. It is just my opinion. Having said that, I will say this now. If you are a true Home Alone fan, a true Home Alone fan, you like films one, two, and three, and you don't like four and five. Home Alone 3 is literally the most underrated film in history. It gets such a bad rap, and even 10 year old me in 1997 didn't really like it at first. That only lasted maybe a couple of months and then it grew on me and I became obsessed with the third film as well. To me, it's the perfect ending to the series. People never seem to grasp that Home Alone 3 was written by the same writer of the first two. It's not trying to pretend it's something that it's not. It takes place in the same neighborhood as the first film. The only thing different about it is just that it's a different family. I will defend that movie until the day that I die. Alright, so remember earlier when I said that I was going to get into 4 and 5 later? I'm not going to do that. You get, I, It's not even worth my time. I, you can Google them and you'll get all the info that you need. It's just, yeah, it's, they should have never been made. You know what? I actually can make this video theme park relevant because there's a Home Alone prop at a store in Disney's Hollywood Studios. I may be wrong about the name of the store, but I believe it's the Once Upon a Time shop on Sunset Boulevard at Disney's Hollywood Studios. On one of the walls of the store, they actually have a crowbar from Home Alone, the first one, and it's actually a rubber crowbar. All right, now that I've got my talk and my rant out of the way, let's go see the collection. All right, so first up in the collection are the actual movies themselves. This has to be my favorite of the uh, the box sets out there for Home Alone. Um, this is the triple pack. I believe this came out in like 2002 or 2003, something like that. I really just love the overall design of this. Um, I love how Kevin's looking in through the mail slot, and on the back, Alex is looking through. 
There's other Home Alone box sets out there, like the ones you see in stores. I think there's one called like the Caper Collection or something like that that has the fourth film, and I think there's one that even includes number five, but I just love this box set. I like the way that looks with all the titles lined up. I also really like how they're just like standalone DVDs um, once you take them out of the box set. Um, I think that is really cool. Up next are the novelizations. Um, they made one for each of the three films. Each of the three books has a part in the middle which is just um, color photographs from the film. The novelization of the second film is uh, really interesting to say the least, um, just because of the amount of stuff in it that didn't make it to the film. Um, there's a scene where Marv has a nightmare in prison. It's also worth noting as well that this book is probably the most graphically violent book I've ever read. Um, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but it, this is just the way the author goes into the details during the trap segments. I can't even explain how graphic it is. Another thing that I found interesting is the author who wrote the first book also wrote the third one. Um, and then it was a different author who wrote the second one. If somebody has a Home Alone collection, you better bet everything that they've got one of these, the talk boy. Um, I don't even know where to begin on this. Um, I can't even tell you how important this, I don't even, I don't even want to call it a toy, a device. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how important this device was to me growing up. I used it well beyond, uh, into the late nineties, recording things off of TV, radio, uh, recording family members, anything. I got so much use out of this, and not to mention, it's just a really cool, it's almost like a prop from the movie. Um, if you have one of these, it's basically like owning a movie prop from Home Alone 2. And these are the cassettes that would come with your Talkboy. This one on the left is the first one that I ever got. Um, it came with my original Talkboy back in 1993. And I believe about a year later or so, I got another one because my first one stopped working. Um, and as you can see, it's an updated cassette. Originally, the cassette on the left um, didn't come with any audio. It was just a blank cassette for you to use. Whereas the one on the right um, came preloaded with little quotes from the movie and just different audio snippets. And moving on, we have Home Alone and Home Alone 2 Lost in New York for the Game Boy. Um, these are pretty decent games. They both still work. Um, I definitely like the first one better than Home Alone 2. To me, it just seems like there's better gameplay in the first one. Up next are two floppy drives for the Home Alone 2 PC game. Um, there used to be three floppy drives, but I think we lost one over the years. I also used to have the original Home Alone for the PC as well. Um, both of these games were just awesome. Um, they were both very different from each other. In the original Home Alone, you walked around the McAllister house and set up traps and stuff like that. In Home Alone 2, you were literally running through New York and just setting up traps as you go. Thankfully, nowadays, they have websites such as Abandonia that offer both of these games, and that's how I still play them to this day. Moving on to the board games, this is the board game for the original Home Alone. Um, this has been in my family ever since it came out. The game board itself is actually pretty cool because it's a somewhat replica of the first floor of the McAllister house. Um, I think there's a few rooms missing, but I'm not trying to be nitpicky. I like how they include that lawn jockey statue that always gets run over in the films. Overall, it's a pretty decent game, but it's not as fun as the one for Home Alone 2. Now this game is awesome. Home Alone 2 Lost in New York action contraption game. I first got this game during Christmas of 1993 and I was obsessed with it. This game is sort of like Mousetrap, except the setting is at Uncle Rob's abandoned brownstone in New York. I'm not going to set this up right now because I actually already have a video of this game in action on my other YouTube channel. I've been wanting to remake it and reshoot it in HD, um, but the thing is, I don't have any of my account info for my other channel. I don't have my email or my password, so I am unable to take that video down. Um, I can put the link to that video in the description below so you guys can go check it out, but 
yeah, I, I, I want to reshoot that video in HD, but I just got to figure out that stuff first. And that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed my Home Alone collection. If you haven't subscribed already, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm looking forward to getting back to doing more theme park videos, so stay tuned for those. Happy holidays, everyone.